in the last year, we've been going at quantum, um, I don't want to use speed, but we've been uh, in a quantum accelerated energy process. We started off uh, one year ago, almost to the date, uh, one year ago, at the uh, Cryon Conference in Sedona. Uh, and I work closely with Cryon at times, particularly when we're sharing a stage. And I talked to the Cryon uh, prior to that event. There was what, eight, nine hundred people there. It was a huge event. And I knew it was time to say something important to that audience, but particularly to you. I checked with the Cryon in advance and I said, here's what I'm going to talk about, uh, just to make sure that it was comfortable with the whole consciousness of that gathering. And I made a statement, uh, a very strong statement, and I said, the new age is over. It is over. And that's not exactly the greatest venue, the greatest place to make that announcement. Uh, Sedona <laughs> is um, new age uh, central uh, for United States and, and actually for a lot of the world. It's also Macchio central. It's not my favorite place to go. But I did make that announcement. I said, the new age is over, uh, meaning that it's time to stop talking about it. It's time to stop uh, exploring all the different modalities and methods, and it's time to wrap that up. Uh, Blavatsky and, and Jung and Steiner and uh, a few others were so instrumental in starting the New Age 140 years ago. Uh, it, it was a time when the world needed new thinking and a new approach uh, to dive into uh, mysticism and spirituality in a way that none of the churches were providing and really none of the other religions were providing. But it came time for the New Age to close. And basically in closing to say, it's either time to go back to ordinary, regular life as a human, or it's time to come into your enlightenment. Uh, it's time to be that embodied master on earth. So that started a very um, fast-paced process. And I realized I wasn't invited back again this year. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> then last summer, we did the Ancestral Freedom. Uh, I know many of you have uh, listened to it or watched it. It's not a pleasant um, program. It's not a pleasant cloud class, uh, I guess you call them. It's difficult. It wasn't very long, uh, but it's very difficult because I knew it was time to let go of that final imbalanced karmic connection to old family. Many of you uh, who went through that and experienced it had weeks or, or even months afterwards of challenges, challenges in the body, and in relationships, sadnesses, because it was letting go of old relationships uh, that were not really in balance with you anymore. It was holding you back. And it wasn't meant to say, walk out on your family, or divorce your spouse, or throw your children out the door um, in, into the world. It was meant to say that you've had a very long, long lineage with uh, the biology and the, the mindset of a family that you may love, uh, you, you may hate, it doesn't really matter, but it's time to let that go. You can't drag that into enlightenment. You can love them. You can have compassion for them. but. I invited all of you to look at your ancestral background. Uh, and it was difficult for, for many of you, and I know there were some physical issues that went in, but that was the, the next step that we took. Then we started the Walk On series. This is number 10 in the Walk On, and it, it, for some reason it just seems like number 3, like we just started it, because it's going fast. We've delved into, dived into a, a lot of material this year. We, we've 
gone into a lot of issues uh, in, the, in the past nine chowds. Then it came the time for the, the Bon Adventure uh, in Hawaii. Uh, the Bon Adventure was a wonderful, beautiful workshop, but what happened there was really very important. I told the group, uh, and I believe it was the second day, I said, this is the first time at Chambre that we've met. It was the first time that we've met, and the overlying um, energy uh, was not about issues and problems. We've had hundreds and hundreds of gatherings over the years, but generally what happened is that Chambre came in with their problems. Uh, and that's okay. Uh, they're silent problems. They didn't come in uh, crying at the door. They didn't come in demanding uh, answers to their, to their issues. But it was there. It was like a cloud hanging over the entire gathering. I had to work with it. Tobias had to work with it also. But it was energetically in your way. Uh, the human issues, the, the basic ones, abundance, health, uh, relationships and self-worth. And some of you had really been struggling with that, and particularly, particularly relationships. And that's why I felt that ancestral freedom was so important. But at that gathering was the first time it wasn't the, the overriding, the big issue. That was a huge breakthrough, not just for that group, but it was indicative of all Chambra. It was representative of all of you. And it happened again recently when we were in Italy, both Threshold and the Amyo retreat. With both of them, the overriding energy wasn't problems uh, in your life. Uh, you know, those human struggling, almost unsolvable problems. Now we could really walk on. We could really make a lot of progress. It's been speeding up uh, at, at literally a quantum level. It's one of the reasons why so many of you are feeling exhausted in the body. You know, the, the mind thing goes back and forth, but what I really noticed here in this show today is the, the energy level, the, the physical issues. It's, it's had an effect this light speed on the body. It's had an effect. The good news is that it's not permanent and it's not going to keep getting worse. Uh, but I can tell that it's had an effect. So the, it's been a very, very fast year. A lot of things happening in this year. And when you look at what we've talked about, what we've covered this year, just stop for a moment and the magnitude of it this year we've taken on darkness and said that darkness is an illusion. Well, that in itself is enough for, for about two lifetimes worth of work. Uh, and we recently did it. Darkness is absolutely an illusion. If you believe in it, then it's going to be there and it's going to affect your life and it's going to put things into a lot of imbalance. You're always going to be afraid of or fighting the darkness. Once you rise above that illusion and realize there really isn't darkness, uh, and particularly in your life, you can, you can move on be, beyond all of those struggles. It is truly an illusion. There are people who will fight for darkness, who will insist on light and dark, on uh, angels and devils. And let them, let them. It's their game to play, but let's us. We moved uh, beyond that. We're moving beyond death itself. We talked about it extensively the other day at the Amyo retreat. Everybody showed up wanting the good life, and what did I do? Talk about death. <laughs> <laughs> but death is such, a, such an issue for humans. The belief in death. There is no death. Uh, but yet humans insist on it. Uh, they look at a body in a coffin and they say, well, obviously Adamus is wrong. Uh, they, they see their friends, their relatives, their parents, their brothers and sisters dying. And they say, well, that's going to happen to me. Everybody says sooner or later you're going to die. That 
actually is not true. There is a transition of the physical body, and the Master understands that someday they're going to absolutely integrate, bring their physical body into their entire body of consciousness. But there's no death. There's no death. It's a transition. You are more alive than ever, particularly with the understanding of the I exist. You realize that this, this, what has been called death, which is really a transition of the biology, transition of the biology, and it doesn't have to be the, the kind of ugly death people have been experiencing, but you come to realize that you're more alive than ever when you make that transition. I, I told the group at Amyo the other day, so many Shambra have said, this is going to be my last lifetime on this planet. Uh, and I take that to mean the last lifetime going through the process that you've had to go through now. The last lifetime where you are birthed. The last lifetime where you forget who you were. The last lifetime where you're uh, living in the cloud, uh, the, the dark shadow actually, of mass consciousness and all of its unpleasant things like lack of abundance, like disease, like wars and famine and all the rest of that. But I told the group the other day that you're going to be, you have the option or the choice to be the first that are going to be coming back, if you choose, without going through birthing. You can choose to integrate yourself into a, a printed body, a, a nano body. Uh, or you just simply manifest your, your light body for a few days at a time. But when you've talked before about never coming back, you mean in the old way. There are new ways to come back and experience this planet without having to go through the old system to do it. There are ways to experience the beauty of the nature of this planet and good, healthy relationships on this planet without having to do it the old way. You're going to be the first that are going to be doing that. Now, the Ascended Masters uh, came in, it was a little bit different. Uh, they, they went generally through the birthing process with a few kind of exceptions like Tobias uh, with the shell body, but he still went through the human uh, patterns to come back. If you choose, you'll be the first ones that really transcend the meaning of death. The meaning of death is that your body dies, usually of some disease or an accident, and that you come back for another lifetime, but you've forgotten who you are. You will be the first that have the potential to really defy death because you'll come back without birth. You'll come back and know exactly who you are. You'll come back and not have the gravity of mass consciousness pull you into things that you know just aren't right, in, into other people's dramas into abundance issues, into a wide variety of things. So when I've heard you, uh, and Tobias always heard you say, uh, never coming back, we kind of knew that you were saying, not the old way. We're going to create the new way. We're going to change the consciousness of death on this planet. And you're doing that. You're absolutely doing that. And each and every one of you will have the opportunity, has everything you need for embodied enlightenment in this lifetime and the transcendence of death to where you can come back here however you want, whenever you want, and truly enjoy life the way it should be. So this year, we've, in our quantum uh, consciousness opening, we've gone beyond death. We've gone beyond God. That was a tough one, uh, because Linda was always giving me a hard time about it. How can I say that about God and Jesus? We've talked about God. 
and we looked, uh, we've talked about it many other years, but this year we really said this old God just isn't going to work anymore. And we weren't afraid to say it. We didn't worry about, you know, the lightning bolt uh, coming in. God is a joke, a bad human joke. It's a reflection of human consciousness. It has nothing to do with the divine or spirituality. The people that have uh, created this man-god did, did not have a divine experience, because then you don't write uh, lame books about it. <laughs> we've taken on uh, the churches. Uh, we've taken on religions. We've even taken on the New Age uh, with a lot of macchio. And we said, that is not God. That is not Spirit. Spirit, God, is right here. I am God also. We've said no more to some of these scary old belief systems, to karma, to sin, to, uh, all, to uh, penance and suffering. It, it's not, this is not meant to be. It's time for these things to change on this planet. And it's not going to change through uh, lectures and books. It's going to change by a few humans like you going beyond, creating the whole new template for this planet. This past year we took on power. Power. Most humans believe in power. They don't question power. Life is a game of power. You either have it or you don't. If you have it, you're always afraid of losing it, so you try to get more. If you don't have it, you're always wishing that you would get it, and you're afraid of the people that are powerful. Power is an illusion. It's an absolute illusion. It doesn't exist anywhere other than human consciousness and the human mind. Other than that, it doesn't exist. And we said, let's walk on. Let's go into the powerless life, because in a powered life, there's always forcing. There's a harshness. There's always um, a fear. In a, in a power life, it's looking outside rather than looking inside. There's no need for power. But people don't understand energy and consciousness, so they go after power instead. Power is everywhere on the planet. It's in businesses, of course. It's in religions and churches, absolutely in the government. It's in therapy. It's in the pharmaceutical industry. It's in everything. This world operates on power. Power. And it's actually interesting because the whole dynamic with fossil fuel, old fuel, is such a reflection of this whole consciousness of power. You have to explode something to move it forward. You have to have force and dynamics. And basically the planet isn't going to find the real energy solution as long as it believes in power. We've taken it on. And the words come through me, from me through Caldra, but there are, it's your consciousness that's coming through. It's your saying no more to death, no more to this belief in darkness, no more to the old God. We've changed. You've changed in one short year. We've taken on time and space. That's a big one. We said, time, space, move through you. It's not you moving through a linear projection through time and space. Time and space moves through you. It's such a simple physics. Uh, it's almost hard for me to imagine that uh, the scientists and uh, the physicists haven't gotten that. It's so simple, it's revolutionary. And when they finally get it through their uh, human brains, it'll change uh, the, the whole understanding of science and God and power and everything else. But right now they're locked into it. But you are changing that. You are some of you have absolutely felt it. Other you, of you have that knowingness that time and space are moving through you. You're the master. You're not at the mercy of time and space. Speaking of which, time in particular, history 
History is a sequence of time. We've talked about, we're actually uh, even defying history. History is basically a, a linear human story. These events happened on these dates, and people believe it without questioning it. Say, well, you're crazy if you don't believe what's written in these books. We're coming to understand that history is an uh, is aspect of time, and that time is flexible. You don't have to be trapped in linear time anymore, and that when you take a look at your past, at your history, that actually it's not necessarily what your mind remembered. It's not necessarily what was even written in the books. And uh, people will challenge that and say, well, you got, you're crazy, you know, this is what happened. But the Master comes to discover that uh, it's very flexible, that what happened in the past can be changed, uh, the perspective of it, and, and also the understanding of all the dynamics that went in. You're not locked into time. You're not locked into your history anymore. And even the other day, we took on love uh, at the, uh, the Amyo retreat. We talked in depth about love. Now, a lot of times when I hear people talk about peace, love, and joy, I want to vomit. Um, <laughs> It's a macchio cliché, and I say that because they really don't understand what these things are. Uh, they're, they're, they're saying it from almost a hypnotic standpoint, peace, love, and joy. We talked in depth about love uh, and about, about true, deep love, what it really is. We've taken on uh, the biggest issues in the last year. And you've been an integral part of all these things. We've moved at this light speed, and uh, you'll know that in the last couple of years, I've been talking uh, almost uh, ad nauseum uh, until you get bored about your five human senses uh, and and the mind, saying that these things create the perspective of your reality. Your mind, your human senses give you the perspective of reality, but that's not all there is. Let's move forward. Let's expand that. Let's go into the master's sense, uh, which is very, very different than any human sense uh, and the mind. Let's begin exploring what else is already here. So. In this last year, with a lot of talking about the senses and about the going beyond the mind, we've done that. We've started opening, you started opening the master's sense. It's still coming. You're still, some of you question if it's there or if you're doing it right. It's going to come. It's, don't work at it, really. Don't, don't effort with it. Just feel into it and allow it. We've done an incredible amount this year, and there's a lot more to come. A tremendous lot. Good lot to come.